Okay, so this video is a walkthrough of, uh, or sorry, the first of multi parts uh, walking through uh, the processing for our gizmo simulation on Freefall Laboratory. Uh, now, everyone had a different setup than uh, each other group. Uh, the current setup that I used was a mass of 50 grams, a radius of one, uh, a height of between one and 10 meters. Uh, we have zero initial velocity, 1.3 is the density of air, which complicates things because we're not pretending it's in free fall. We're actually uh, accommodating normal air resistance, which means we need to design the size uh, and mass of our object such that uh, air resistance isn't going to have a significant effect on things. So we're looking for things that are more like a rock dropping and less like a feather dropping which means we want to jack up the mass as much as possible um, while reducing its uh, cross-sectional area or size as much as possible. I did not maximize either of those things. Many of your groups did. Um, I wanted to choose something that was, you know, a little bit different per se. Um, but anyway, that, that's bas our basic settings here. And we can see as we drop this that even with my current settings that the drag or air resistance starts to increase by the end. Um, and if we take a look at the table, that the acceleration was uh, not quite 9.8 the entire time. Now, I told you that we are not allowed to officially use this velocity and acceleration data. That is often true uh, for experiments that you do in science, where you have some extra data here on the side that is kind of helpful as a guide, but is not official enough for one reason or another to include in your experiment. Technically, this is official enough. We could include it in the experiment but this is not something we would get if we were actually doing this in the classroom. So I wanted to be mindful of that or it would be sloppy enough. We could not use it is really what would go on. Um, so that was the basic premise of our experiment. We're going to take a look at a spreadsheet now. Um, so uh, eventually uh, you would be collecting data. Here is the data that I will eventually process, um, not in this video, but later. Um, uh, but right now what we're going to do is take a look at uh, the purpose of processing. So uh, forget that we were doing something on free fall and I just want you to, to imagine we did an experiment uh, where we changed x and we looked at y. Um, so x was our independent, y was our dependent. Uh, we had a pretty significant error, so 0.2 um, and we only went on an x range of 1 to like 2.8. So uh, if you remember our 8 by 10 kind of guideline or rule of thumb, this is not following it. And so my point with this is going to show you why we want to follow that 8 by 10 guideline as a rule of thumb. It's not perfect. It doesn't always solve things, um, but often it gets you out of trouble without you realizing uh, what you actually need to do to begin with. Um, so here we, we collected data and a, a normal layperson, typical um, uh, a person would look at this and go, yeah, cool. The line goes up, uh, it hits, you know, almost all the data points. Um, a person trained in physics or with error bars would be like, yeah, the line hits all the data points or the error bars, so it's an appropriate line of best fit. Um, but this class is going to ask you to push beyond both of those and look at, okay, well, yes, this line fits, but what is the maximum, like the steepest line that you could go from like from here all the way over to here um, where it's steeper than this blue line and what is the uh, flattest line that could fit all the data points or the error bars so going from approximately here to approximately here um, it doesn't have to be the first and last data point that it hits it just has to be the steepest and flattest or most negative slope line um, that is possible to fit all of the data points or the error bars so if we took a look at that and we imagine that scenario, it would look something kind of like this, where I erase that uh, kind of normal line of best fit line um, and instead put in the minimum line of best fit or the slope that is the least that fits all of our data points and the greatest slope that hits all of our data points. Now, the greatest one, we're like, all right, cool. It's a little bit steeper, not a big deal. But the minimum one, what we notice is because our error bars are so large compared to our data range, what we see is an actual negative slope going down here that still fits all of our data. Now, the whole reason why we process all of this is to, uh, or process all of our data is to prove, or well, not prove, because we can't technically do that, but to show with strong evidence 
that there is a positive correlation in the slope or a negative correlation in the slope. Basically that either it's going up as we increase x or going down as we increase x. That is the ultimate goal. Um, and to do as precisely as possible, but that would be the bare minimum. Here, we can't do that because literally because of the size of our error bars, we can't confirm that it is a positive slope because here the minimum slope that still fits is negative. So this could actually be a relationship that is a constant or flat relationship. In other words, there is no effect on uh, of x on y, um, but because of our error bars, we're unable to see that. Or it could be that, yes, what is probably actually likely that, yeah, there's a slight increase as it goes on. Um, but because our experiment was not well controlled, because we have such sloppy data or data that is um, such a large uh, random error, and or because we didn't extend our range that we looked at, kind of choosing a value of x that was at least 10 times bigger, we are unable to actually show definitively that there is a relationship where as x increases, y increases, um, because there is the possibility that y could decrease or just stay the same. So ultimately, um, what we're going to do over the next course of videos will seem a little bit extensive in terms of the processing, but the goal is to uh, be able to prove, def or sorry, to show uh, definitively, at least based on your data, or to uh, lean heavily towards definitively, um, that as x increases, y increases, or that as x increase, increases, y decreases. So kind of a negative relationship. And ideally, you're able to go beyond that, um, beyond just like a correlation or linear correlation, and actually show that, oh yeah, it's either a square relationship or an inverse relationship or a quadratic, or which is the same as square, but or an inverse square, um, or exponential, which is rare in our cases, but possible sometimes. So that is where we're going to go over the next few videos. Um, this was a basic introduction to that. Uh, move on to the next video to watch how to actually do the processing.